Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is December the 23rd, 2021. This is the last podcast of the year. I'll be taking a couple of weeks off and we'll start back up again around the middle of January. The topic for this evening is your spiritual home. And because this is the last podcast of the year. So I think uh, it is fitting for me to start this podcast with a very brief look back on 2021. Now, I'm not going to do the, the, the usual news and talking about, you know, what happened in 2021. I'm actually just sharing what it is that I got out of 2021 in, in, in that way, looking back. And also in general, what um, actually happened on the, the, the human collective level. So for me, 2021 is the year that I got to know myself a lot better. And I mean, really a lot better. I got to see myself not with rose tinted glass, but really get to see myself objectively, as objectively as one can see anything. So I got In other words, I got real with myself and I also got to know um, everyone else around me a little better as well. And 2021 is a year that I and I believe as well as the whole human collective all made a choice to wake up from our childhood, um, play and fantasy and chose to grow up no matter what it takes. And what do I mean by that? When you look around the world, um, whether at the beginning of the 2021 or even right now, when you look around the world, you can actually see that you know, we, we seem to be a very civilized um, and technologically advanced society. We have beautiful, magnificent buildings, ski scrapers. We have technology where we can talk to anyone, no matter where they are in the world there. We have, it's internet connection is fairly easy for most people anyways. And yet for all the, of all of our technological achievements, we are still in our infancy the whole human collective, when I mean we, I'm talking about the whole human collective, we are really in infancy. And what I mean by infancy is that our consciousness is still in the juvenile stage, we still like to play the bully game, or the victim game, we like to, to play games with ourselves. And there has been actually a few iteration of the inhabitants of Earth where the uh, few iterations of different times, earlier times where humanity kind of got to the point where they are very technologically advanced. However, conscious, in terms of consciousness though, they are we still in a very juvenile state and it never ended well for humanity when our technical abilities outpace our consciousness. However, this time around though, the human collective really made a different call. And when we look out and we see all of these government overreaching is really our wake up call. And it is really asking each and every one of us, are we ready to take control of our own lives, of advancing our own consciousness and be the creator of our own reality or not? So that is the choice that we, each one of us has to make. And of course, on, at a soul level, we already made that choice. Um, probably two, three years ago, or maybe even longer. 
And now we are actually seeing all of this things that was done at a soul level being played out in the physical level. And that's why we, we had the year that we have. So this is, this is the year where we, I think from the beginning of the year till now, you all have some idea what, what was your choice? Um, whether you, you made a choice to go forward or you made a choice to, I don't want to go forward. I just want to stay in this, this level of um, playing these bully games. And so, and I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with either choice because it is a very individual choice. We, so regardless of what each one have chosen individually in our, in our private, in our minds privately, we as a collective is called really to co-create a solution where no matter what choice you have decided on, we can all proceed together as a collective. So no one is being left behind. And if you choose to still want to play in the, um, the bully victim game, you can. You just may not be able to play this, play it out um, for very much longer. That just about sums up my take on 2021 looking back. So for me, it was really um, creating, co-creating, and living out the choice that we have made at a soul level. So now looking forward to 2022, I just want to also give a little bit of um, looking forward to, I know there are, if you look on the, on YouTube, um, wherever it is that you look, there's a lot of predictions of what's going to happen in 2022. Um, Emilia Benz did one and, um, and like I, a few other people that I, um, have already seen at least three or four of these predictions and none of them surprised me and I also want to share my take on <clears throat> what's to look forward to um, of course I'm not talking about you know you know whether we are certain conditions I just want to really talk about the theme of 2022 from, from my standpoint. So for 2020 and 2021, they have all been, for lack of a better word, they have been pause years, meaning that those two years we have stop signs all over. We have been in lockdown, we out of lockdown and went back into lockdown again. So, so there's a lot of delays, stagnations, that um, affected us. And that is you know, left, right, and center. You, you can see all of these stop signs. So that's what I mean by pause years. Pause as in um, hold, holding pattern years. In 2022 though, is the year when the stop signs will be turning to go signs. And what do I mean by go signs is that um, there's, going to be developments, things that have been kind of put on the back burner, things that have not been um, able to, to move forward. This is the year where we'll start to move forward. And I've been told that is to the, the major theme for this year is to prepare to be tested. So what do I mean by that? What do you mean? Um, prepare to be tested. I don't like the sound of test. So um, don't worry. <laughs> yes, humanity, everyone 
each one, no one will be um, exempt exempt from this. We will all be tested. That's that's the bad news. But the good news is that this test is not a it's not a fail or pass test. This is a test to let you know where you're at. This is really you testing yourselves, which means that, you know, don't ask me how are we going to be tested? Because yes, there'll be things that's going to happen. Um, there will be people that will be in, in our family members who would be, who would decide to um, check out, experience life in a very different form, in a transcendent form, or there will be people who um, decided to make drastic changes in their life and find in terms of finance, yes, there's going to be restructuring and all of that. Yes, all of those things is going to also happen. However, those are really the backdrops. Not everyone will be impacted the same with these things. Um, how we will be tested really depends on who we are. And I really cannot tell you what your test is going to be because uh, no one designed those tests except yourself. The test for each person is individualized. So your soul will organize this test that is most appropriate for you. And everyone will get their own unique test. None will be left out. So that was what I was told by, by my guides. And um, yep, I will be tested too. And <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I've done so much work on myself. I don't think and they can throw anything at me that's going to face me out. And my guides were like, really? <laughs> and when they say things like that to me, I, will love, I know, oh, oh. <laughs> Yes, it's going to come. And how, however it is, I don't know. I, I think I have some idea, but I don't know for sure. So each and everyone will get their own unique test so that you will know where you're at at a soul level so that you can figure out what you need to do in order to grow yourself. So this is what the test is for. It's not a test to make you suffer. It is a test to kind of like a placement test. That's, I think that's, that's the best description I can give it. It's a placement test. So what the your test is going to be will be um, very individual to you. So then how are we going to... Um, be prepared for this test because we only have about another week or so before 2022 hits us. So this is really last minute cramming. So the rest of this podcast will be me giving you some suggestion and also sharing some uh, a piece of, um, I would say, a piece of technology that I've been using and it's been really helpful for myself. And I want, want to share it with you so that if it seems interesting for you, if it resonates with you, that you are more than welcome to try it out and use it for yourself. So suggestion to how to be prepared for this test. Um, I think the first one we kind of, before the, the, the podcast begin began, we, we had a a short, a brief chat, and we kind of touched on that as well, is really to, to have a tribe, to create a support system for yourself, um, and get to know the people in your tribe, and, and if you are listening to this regularly, then this is your tribe, and you may, and it's not that you you can only have one tribe. You can have as many tribes 
as it takes for you to feel supported. You can have a tribe that is for spirituality, a tribe for doing yoga together. So however many tribes you feel you need, get those, create those structures for yourself. And, and when you have a support system, then you if that's the best way to prepare for whatever test that's going to come. And the next suggestion I have is self-care is, is no longer a luxury. It's no longer something that you do when you have time. Self-care is essential now. It's as essential as eating or brushing your teeth in the morning. So self-care as in taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So um, make sure you have like, at least these three areas. You, you may want to have other areas. You may want to um, add social area as well, relationship areas. However, self, whatever self-care means for you is to not just do it sporadically, actually be disciplined and and get self-care in as part of your routine. And especially um, meditation as part of your routine. However you, like, however meditation means for you, whether meditation is when you go for a walk or meditation is when you um, chant a certain um, koan or when you go and have a prayer or just sit in silence at home or in a um, in the forest in the garden or wherever it is that you choose to have that moment for yourself so these things are very important it's no longer a luxury self-care is absolutely important essential and the third one is really, how should I put it? It's really to fortify your own spiritual home, which is really why the, the topic of my um, podcast for this evening is your spiritual home, is to create a, a sacred space for yourself in your mind. And this is actually, so what do I mean by that? I actually, this is what I do now when I, this is what I do now when I go in my meditation is I actually do have a visualization where, and um, if you look at the, if you can see the screen, it's really, you know, this behind this door is my spiritual home. The door does not necessarily has to look like this. Your spiritual home can look anything you like it to look. Mine actually have round doors. Um, actually, looks like a hobbit's home because that I like round things. So for me, that is the most comfortable for me. So when I go into meditation, the first thing I do is really to ground myself to go within to ground myself into myself to be connected with all parts of me as as much uh, the parts of me as I possibly can have access to to really be connected myself and then I would go in I would imagine that I'm going into my spiritual home and I will imagine myself walking up to that spiritual home open a door and that door has its um, biometrics so that means that only me only I can open this door if they don't have um, the same um, fingerprints handprints as me they can't 
get into this place. So that's what I have. And I would go into this, um, I would imagine. So there is a lot of energies hitting us now. And these energies are not random energies. They are actually has a lot of information in them. The people that we meet would give us information. We all come from different walks of life. Our, the, the information that we each hold in our DNA is absolutely unique. It has all of the information of all of our lifetimes, whether on Earth or on any other planets, any other um, different worlds, dimensions. It comes with each and every one of our DNA, with our physical body. So when we go out in the world and meet other people, whether we know it or not, we are interacting with all of their information. So at a very unconscious level, of course, um, most of the time. So we really don't know what kind of information we have picked up. And that's why there are places I go to where, like for me, it's, it's like I feel so many things going on and I, it's it's hard for me to contain myself I, I would I would just um react to it and not be able to um, contain and control myself it's simply because I pick up on these energies I do not consciously know how to handle them but unconsciously it I'm handling it so the first thing I would do when I go into my spiritual home is to go into a particular room, which I, I turn it, I term it as it's the back lock room is the room where I have all these unprocessed energies and data in them that I don't consciously know how to process them. So when I do meditation, I would go into the back lock room, I would open a door, I would go in there, and I would just ask for what is the most relevant piece of information that I need to integrate in this moment or and in this meditation. So then the information would start to come and I may know what it is consciously or I may not, but I would just sit with the information until I feel um, energetically, what I usually feel is that it's like a, a big wave would come over me and then the wave would start to subside. And when I feel the wave subside, that's when I know, okay, I, my body has processed that. So, if I still have time, then I would ask for the next um, bit of information that, that I need to process. And if I don't, then I would leave this room, get out of the back lock room. And there's another room that I highly suggest that you all create. Now, of course, um, this, is, this is all visualization. This is all in your imagination. However, your imagination makes it real as well. And when you do this, when you take your time to have this practice, to go into your own spiritual home, to clean up things, to process things, to consciously go in there and, and do these things, you will feel the, the difference. Um, I actually forgot to mention that um, Jason Estes, 
added one piece to the backlog room, which I really liked. So what he suggests is that when you're done, when you, um, let's say, he actually suggests to only spend about five minutes in there. I, I usually spend more than that. Um, that's just me. It's, it's really up to any, because this is your spiritual home, so you can do whatever you want. So his suggestion is when you're done is to give like because what I see in my room in the backlog room sometimes I would see just a few things in there and sometimes I would see it as like a mad scientist room it's like a tornado went over it so um, there's no there's no way that I could possibly process everything in that room even if I spend the rest of the day in it. So invariably, there will be something in your backlog room that you cannot process that day. So he suggested actually to whatever is left over to, to consciously clear the whole room, to give everything that you don't have time to process back to, um, back to source, back to God, whomever your God is, is to just send it back to God or whatever your belief is, the source creator or the universe is to don't try to um, hoard your own backlogs. Don't, don't think that you have to keep every bit of information that you don't have time to process. Is to just give it back don't don't hoard don't uh, try to keep everything just give it back to the universe whatever it is that is relevant for you to process will will be there again the next time you go into this room so i like that process because it actually it it does make a difference when at the end of whatever time that i have to spend in this back lot room at the end of it, I can actually see the whole room being emptied out. It's a nice feeling to it. So I like that addition. So another room that I highly suggest that you all go into is called the, um, I call it the throne room. You can call it whatever you like, but the, the what you want to do in this room is meet your guides. If you have not met your guides, though, just create a room because it is your visualization. So you can have any room you like. So create a room and call it whatever you like. You can call it your guides room or you can call it for me. I call it my throne room. So where you when I open a door in there I know that all my guides are going to be in there because I created it that way so go into the throne room or the council room whatever name you want to give it and hang out with your guides for however long you want to um why is it um important to have this room guidance of course when I go into this room, I like I, I have a rule that if I can see the guide, if I can see the face of the guides, then that means that they are ready to talk to me. Then I would go up there and ask questions. So a lot of the times, all I can see is um, hands. I can see hands. I can see a silhouette. I can only see, you know, kind of a, a shape but I don't see their face. So I have it that whenever I can see the face, when I can see like the whole, the whole um, entity of the guides, that means that they are ready to talk to me. So that's what I've been doing is when I see their face and when I can see, you know, the rest of their body too, then I know that that means I, I get to ask them whatever I want. And it's pretty cool, some of the things that I, I got from them. Um, I remember very recently, I went in there and actually uh, 
Jesus was there, was in there. Um, Jesus, usually not my guide. I don't think so. Um, but that day, Jesus was there. And he kind of gave me a, a heads up that I need to process something um, regarding Franco's death that I haven't quite processed yet. And I was like, oh, I thought I did that already, but you know, apparently not. So, so he, uh, because um, Yeshua, or Jesus, uh, is, um, is Franco's guide. So his guide came to talk to me, crashed my council room and let me know, you know, there's some things you need to do there. And then I remember I, some, sometimes I actually, um, some of the questions I get to ask my guides is, you know, what am I here to do? What is my purpose? Why, why am I living this crazy life here? So they gave me the answer and I was like, oh, I didn't, well, I kind of have some inkling, but I don't know for sure. So it was good confirmation. So these are the kinds of conversations that you can have when you're in this, in the throne room or whatever room you want to call it, where all your guides are. So that's why I highly suggest that you create that room. And so there's a back lock room and then there's the throne room and then um, what other rooms can you have? I mean, it is your spiritual home. So you are free to create any room in there. One of my room is um, spiritual development room. So I have a, a room that has spiritual development. And when I go in there, what I need to clear out, um, it would be in there. So um, one, one of the things that I want to really get better at is to be able to see energy better because, you know, Sifu James can see energy so clearly. So I want to actually develop that better myself. I can, I can see energy, but, you know, it's, is really a far cry from from other people so so that can be something that you can go in there have a room that that specifically for you to develop your um, psychic abilities if that interests you you can have a room that's called your um your health room so in there anything concerning your health would be in there so what do I mean by in there? Um, it's all symbolic because your, your unconscious mind communicates with you symbolically. I remember one of my room is my career room. And there was this one time when I went in there and I can see that there are holes in the room. I mean, the, the floor is like, it's like it's been dug up. So what does that mean? So I have to sit there and really um, think about, okay, this is, this, is, this is the symbol that my, um, that my unconscious mind is telling me. This is what they think about my career. So, so then I would try to understand that. And then once I understood what that means, then what is the work that I need to do in order to improve on it, in order to create this work relationship with my unconscious mind so that I can set in place things that's going to improve in my mind what how my career it can develop in ways. So this is what I mean by the technology that, that I want to share with you is in this, in this way, you can get a lot of information. You can communicate with yourself. You can get, you can actually talk to your guides. You can 
process energy. You can use this to do so many things. And I, I really, this, so this is, has been what it is that I've been um, working with. And this is what I found that is really helpful for my own development. I call this your spiritual home um, technology, but you can use this for things that is beyond spiritual. You can use it for, let's say, manifesting money. You can use it for manifesting a partner. So you can, let's say, have a room in there that is called your perfect partner. So when you go in there, <clears throat> um, everything in this in the room because you're the one that is communicating with your unconscious mind so when you set up a room it means you're opening a it's like you're making a call to your unconscious mind hello this is winnie um i want to find my perfect partner unconscious mind so give me all that you have about finding that perfect partner so when you go into the room, that is essentially what you're asking for. So whatever it is that you see in that room um, is all of your unconscious conversation about the topic that you set the room for. So it means that when you go in there, you would be able to look at all your beliefs about your perfect partner or about your career or about your financial um, abundance. So all of your own beliefs, whether they are supportive beliefs or not so supportive beliefs, you would be able to get all of that in there. And then, and then you start to process the unsupportive beliefs and get rid of them and send them back to source, send them back to your higher self, send them back to the light of God, whatever it is that you want to do with it. And you can also have a room that is called resource room. So within the resource room is really answers answers to what it is that you need to know to do in order for you to um, meet your perfect partner for example or have better finance so that that is you can have a room that's called your resource room so these are all the things that you can create and play with in this in this um, your spiritual home this is the technology. And this has worked for me. I don't know whether I've explained it sufficiently. However, I highly suggest that if you really am looking for a way to assist you in preparing yourself emotionally um, and spiritually and, and even physically, then this is something that you can start to play with is to actually create this um, rapport, this communication with you and your unconscious mind because your conscious mind, your consciousness is only what you know about yourself is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things that is kind of buried in your unconscious mind. And this is a protocol or a technology, whatever what you want to use for it, for you to start to communicate with the parts of you that you are not familiar with and be able to get answers. So I think I've covered everything that I want to cover for today. So thank you very much for listening to this talk. <laughs>